OK, so we're going to look at a very specific trick for denesting certain expressions involving square roots, like these ones. And then I'm going to share some little results that I found related to this that I thought were really interesting. So first of all, the trick, how this works is, we take this first number 7 and consider the number 10 here. We can write 7 as 5 plus 2 and 10 as 5 times 2. And then we'll explain in a moment how this trick works, but then this allows us to denest this expression as the square root of 5 plus the square root of 2. So you can check this if you like. And then for the second one, we've got 8 and 15. And even though we've got a negative sign, we can apply the same sort of trick. So we've got here 8 is 5 plus 3 and 15 is 5 times 3. So this allows us to write this. The only difference is we'll have a minus sign now. So root 5 minus root 3. And again, we'll see where this is coming from in a moment. Now for this next one, the trick doesn't quite work with 9 and 2. But you notice we had a coefficient of 2 here next to our square root, whereas here we've got a coefficient of 6. So we could actually write this as 6 is 2 times 3, or 2 times the square root of 9 times the square root of 2. So then we can rewrite all of this expression as 9 minus 2 root 18, just combining the 9 and the 2 together there. And then you can see we can apply the same trick from before now with 6 and 3. So we've got 6 plus 3 makes 9, and 6 times 3 makes 18. So then we can write this as root 6 minus root 3. So I haven't really explained or verified what's going on here. So all that's happening really is if you consider the answer and work in reverse, let's say we're looking for an answer of the form root a plus or minus the square root of b, and then imagine we square all of this. So then expanding the brackets, we'd get first of all root a squared would just give us an a, and root b squared would just give us a b, and then we'd also have two lots of root a times root b, positive or negative, so we'd have plus or minus two root, so root a times root b gives us root a b like this. And then if you imagine we square root both sides, assuming all of this is positive, we're going to get root a plus or minus root b is equal to the square root of a plus b plus or minus 2 times the square root of a times b. So you can see now we've got this a plus b term, we've got this a times b term, and then the, we can rewrite this as root a plus or minus root b as long as we're in this sort of form. So how this might look if you wanted to write this as a little formula to follow. Let's imagine we have the square root of x plus or minus 2 times the square root of y. Then we can write this as root a plus or minus root b if we've got x needs to be a plus b. So x equals a plus b. And we also need y, the one in the square root here, needs to be equal to a times b. So if we're given a square root expression that looks like this with x and y, we could try looking for, first of all, can we write x as the sum of two integers and y as the product of the same two integers? And then this will allow us to denest this. So this is where the trick comes from. And then we'll have a look at some more examples now. So you might be wondering if this works for all expressions of this form. And as we'll see with this example, unfortunately it doesn't. So here we've got x is 4 and y is 5, so we would need 4 to be equal to our sum of a and b, and we need 5 to be equal to the product. And then we can just solve this like simultaneous equation. So we can think of b is going to be 4 minus a. Then we substitute this into our second equation, we're going to get 5 equals a times 4 minus a. So we've got 5 equals 4a minus a squared, and then taking everything onto the left hand side, we're going to get a squared minus 4a plus 5 equals 0. And then this unfortunately doesn't have any real solutions because the discriminant, so this negative 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times 5, we actually get negative 4 which is less than 0. So the discriminant's negative, so there are actually no real solutions here. So we can't denest this expression in the same way as before. And there's also examples where there are solutions a and b, but where we still can't denest in the way that we'd like, so if a and b aren't integers. So I just looked at this example, which would be 6 plus 2 root 3. So here we're looking for our sum, a plus b needs to be 6, and we want our product a times b to be 3. So then if we solve this just like before as a quadratic, 
we're going to end up with our solutions are, first of all, a would be 3 plus or minus root 6, and then b would be 3 minus plus root 6. So if we've got 3 plus root 6 for a, then b is the negative, and vice versa, if a has the negative, b has the positive. So even though we can't denest this, I thought this was quite interesting that we've got the 6 and the 3 here, whereas for our a and b we've got the 3 and the 6. So then we get a nice expression. So if we write the original expression 6 plus 2 root 3, we can write this as root a plus root b, just following the algebra we did earlier. This method does still work, even if we haven't really denested this. So if we go with the positive one first, we have 3 plus root 6, and then we've got b would be 3 minus root 6. We've got root 3 minus root 6. And you can see if we take a with the negative and b with the positive, we just have the same expression where these two terms would be swapped around. So even though we haven't managed to denest this, we've got quite an interesting little curiosity here. This expression equals the sum of these two expressions. So we'll have a look now, see if we can find anything similar to this. So if we want to replicate this equation, we're looking for something of this form, where effectively we've got our a is y plus root x, and our b is y minus root x. So then we can use the fact that x equals a plus b, and y equals a times b, to try and solve to see if we can find any more solutions. So x is a plus b, so we'd have y plus root x plus another y minus root x, so we get x is 2y, and then from y equals a times b, when we multiply a and b here, we get a difference of two squares expression. So we'd need y equals y squared minus x from squaring the square root there. And then we can substitute in x is 2y, we get y equals y squared minus 2y. Then adding 2y, we get 3y equals y squared. And then from there, perhaps you can just see that the only solutions are going to be when y is 0 and also when y equals 3. So y equals 3 is actually the one we had earlier, y is 3, our previous expression. And then when y is 0, x is just double y, so x would be 0, 2. So we don't get a very interesting one there, it's just everything's full of zeros. And the other one, x equals 6, x is 2 times y. So we haven't gained anything new there, and this is actually the only sort of non-trivial expression without the zeros of this form. So what happens if we try and swap around our x and y? So instead of having y plus root x and y minus root x, let's try having a is x plus root y and b is x minus root y. So then just like before, x has to be a plus b, so x will be a plus b is 2x. So you can see we're running into problems already here, x would then have to just be 0. or from the y equals a b expression, we get a uh, multiplying these, we get y equals x squared minus y, a difference of two squares expression. And then you can see because x is 0, y equals negative y, so we get y equals 0 as well. So it doesn't seem like we're getting anywhere with this approach, so we'll try something slightly different after we clear some blood space. And now it'd be really cool if we can make the right-hand side expressions look even more like the left-hand side expression. So we'll try adding some 2s in here next to our square root x terms. So just like before, we've now got y plus 2 root x is a, and y minus 2 root x is our new b value. And then we can try and solve for x and y. We know x is a plus b, so x is going to be, again, it's just 2y, so the 2 root x is cancel, and y is the product a times b, so we get y is, when we multiply these, we get the difference of two squares, but we get y squared, and now it's minus 4x, we multiply the 2 root x by the other 2 root x. So then we can substitute in x is 2y, so we can rewrite negative 4x as negative 8y, and then we can solve this, adding 8y to both sides, 9y equals y squared, so then you can see we've got two solutions, either y is 0 or y is 9. So in the case where y is 0, just like before, x is 2 times y, so x is 0, and here x is 18. So this first case, this is just the trivial case where you'd have all zeros in there, which isn't particularly interesting. But then in this second case, we get a really nice expression then. We've got x is 18 and y is 9, so we're going to have the square root of 18 plus 2 root 9 can be rewritten as the sum of these square roots, the sum of 9 plus 2 root 
18 plus the square root of 9 minus 2 root 18. So I think this is really elegant how we've got the 18 and the 9 switching places here and it's a really cool result until you realise perhaps that the square root of 9 is just the number 3 so there's no reason why anyone would really ever write something like this. So now we're going to move away from these little curiosities like this and back to our original result. There's something really cool we can do with this to finish off involving a little bit of recursion. So if you see here on the left hand side we've got the square root of y inside the square root and if we can also get a square root of y on the right hand side then we'll be able to set up some recursion and we can achieve this just by setting y equal to a. So if we've got y equals a, remember we also need y equals a times b, so this has also got to be equal to a times b. And then if we've got a equals a b, this is telling us that b has to be equal to 1. So we're not going to consider the case where a is 0 because then all of this just becomes root x equals root b effectively. And then once we've got that y is a and b is 1, we know that x is a plus b, so it's going to be x is a plus b, so it's y plus 1. So x is y plus 1, because a is y and b is 1. So what does this actually look like in our equation? Well, we've got the square root of x plus or minus 2 root y. This is now equal to the square root of a, so that's the square root of y, plus or minus the square root of 1, so plus or minus 1. And now for this, we're just going to avoid having to write the plus or minus symbol throughout, so we'll just do this with the positive case, but in the negative case is going to be very similar. So at this point, we're actually going to switch to working with numbers just to make it a bit easier to work with and see what's going on. So we're going to take the case, let's say y equals 5. So if we set y equal to 5, remember x is equal to y plus 1, so x would be 6. So we've got the square root of 6 plus 2 root 5. This is equal to root 5 plus 1. But then if we rearrange to make root 5 the subject on the right hand side, we also have the square root of 6 plus 2 root 5 minus 1 is equal to the square root of 5. So now this expression on the left hand side here can be substituted in here in place of the square root of 5. So we can rewrite all of this now as the square root of 6 plus 2 times, and then in brackets we've got all of this expression so it's root 6 plus 2 root 5, and then outside of the square root is minus 1, like this. But then here, where we've got 2 times negative 1, we can just do 6 take away 2 to simplify this, and we get a 4. So this is really going to be the square root of 4 plus 2 root 6 plus 2 root 5. So we're starting to get some further nesting here. We're going deeper into the square roots and we can go even further by replacing this square root of 5 by the same expression as before. So now we can write all of this as the square root of 4 plus 2 root. Then just like before we've got 6 plus 2 times in brackets all of this so the square root of 6 plus 2 root 5 and then minus 1 in brackets. So if we just extend these out but you can see just like before we have 6 minus 2 will give us another 4. So we're going to get the square root of 4 plus 2 times the square root of 4 and then it's plus 2 times the square root of 6 plus 2 root 5. And then you can see here we could just keep going on and on and on forever like this, keep replacing our root 5s by this previous expression. So now we can write this as an infinitely nested square root expression. We've got the square root of 4 plus 2 root 4 plus 2 times the square root of 4 plus 2 times the square root of 4 plus 2 times the square root and so on and so on like this forever. But don't forget we actually know what the answer to this actually is. We know that this is just root 5 plus 1. So I think it's really cool. We can go from this quite simple looking formula and by applying some recursion here we can get out an infinitely nested square root looking expression that we know is just equal to the square root of 5 plus 1. And now I think this is just a coincidence here but this is actually also equal to 2 times the golden ratio which I think is also really cool. And then just to generalise this as well, remember 5 was equal to our y and here this 4 is coming from this is effectively y minus 1. 
So we're going to change this now. So rather than working with y, we're going to work with this number 4 if we call this n. So then this number is going to be n plus 1. So we've effectively got n is equal to y minus 1 and n plus 1 is equal to y. So you could follow from here the same steps as before and you would get a nice expression now that the square root of n plus 2 times the square root of n plus 2, just like this. And here we keep the 2s because the 2 is coming from the fact that we had a 2 in our original formula before, but then we have the n is the one that's going to change each time. So if we just write this now with the dot dot dot, then this is known now to be equal to the square root of n plus 1 and then plus 1 outside of the square root. So we get a really cool generalization here. And I think this is really interesting that starting with something that seems relatively simple, we can actually get into some really deep and interesting results. And I think this is really nice that with maths, even if you've got a relatively simple looking topic, there's always more to uncover and lots of really cool things that you can find with it.